So you're looking to learn about dynamic zoom, you came to the right place. Today, we're going to go over where exactly it is, how to like turn it on and use it, and some of the best use cases in the types of videos you're going to be making here in DaVinci Resolve. Now, let me go ahead and get out of the way so you don't miss anything. Now, right here, I have a video of me talking, but you can see it looks pretty boring. It's just completely still me just talking and talking and talking on. Maybe you might want to add a little bit of movement in there to just kind of add a little bit more intrigue to the video. Well, you can see the video selected, head up into the inspector over here, and you see right here is dynamic zoom. Turn it on, it's as simple as flipping that over. But you can see on an incredibly long clip, it will barely be zooming in. You almost can't tell that it is zooming in. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Really what you'd wanna use this for is emphasizing particular points. Like let's say in this entire spiel right here where I'm talking, you want this part right here for whatever reason, maybe from there to there to have that dynamic zoom. So we're gonna go ahead and select that portion of the clip that we didn't cut out, put dynamic zoom on there, and as we play across, boom, and then it zooms out for a second. Or you can go ahead and hit the swap button and it'll do the opposite. It'll come across and then zoom in. So uh, there are two options right there just for some short clips. On top of that, you'd probably see over in the inspector here, the drop down where it says linear, you can go ease in and we'll take a look at how that is. So it starts off slower and then goes quick, or obviously, Ease out is the exact opposite. It goes quick and then slows down or in and out. You guessed it goes quick, slows down, slower towards the end. So there are quick instances on how to use it. But in my opinion, there's actually a better way to go ahead and use it. I'm just hitting control Z in order to undo everything I just did. I actually feel it's better if you grab and put it on an adjustment clip. So we're going to go ahead and swap and put the dynamic zoom on the adjustment clip because it was selected. We're going to go ahead and swap it. So this way. Let's say, ooh, you know what? Now that I think about it, I actually want it over a little bit. So you can just go ahead and move it to right where you want it. Oh, actually, I want it shorter. Boom, now it's that long. Now, very important, anytime you put adjustment clips on, there's a little drop down over here. Generally, it will be on transform automatically. Go ahead and select dynamic zoom, and you see there's two different boxes, a green one and a red one. One is the start position and one is the end position. Now I'm gonna go ahead and deselect that, as you see, we're zooming in. So the box on the inside is the end right here, and the green box is the beginning. So if you want it to zoom slower, make the two boxes closer together in size. We'll go ahead and close it, and you see it's zooming in significantly slower. If you make them far apart like this, it will zoom in incredibly fast. Now on top of that, you can actually move these boxes around. Let's say you want to zoom in on my face instead of not on my face. So we go ahead and did that and then it zooms in directly on my head. That's probably more likely where you'd wanna go. On top of that, there's actually even more uses. You can actually go ahead and, let's say you just have a steady picture. We're gonna play forward. Well, that's pretty boring, isn't it? What you can do with that still picture, if you are talking about this particular product, which is a cell phone right here, turn on the dynamic zoom. So right there, you can see it will slowly zoom out, but you don't always want to zoom out. Perhaps you want it to just pan across. Well, you can go ahead and do that too. Once you have dynamic zoom on there, go ahead and pop it up so you see the different colored boxes and actually make them roughly the same size. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Roughly is good enough. Move one to the left, move one to the right. And now you have a quick, simple, basic panning of that image across the screen. Now you can do many different things with that Anywhere you put these different boxes, maybe you want it to go diagonally. You can go ahead and just have it do that as well. Just put one in one corner and one in the other. And this image now pans diagonally across as well. And you can do the same things. Go ahead and have it ease in and out as well. Just add a little bit more dimension to the shot. Also, an example, I have another picture, just some random people with pitchforks. If you do this on the, the uh, adjustment clips, easy enough, you could just hold Alt and drag across and make copies of it. So if this one did have a particular type of zoom you had on it, perhaps you uh, wanted this to go ahead and pan across. We'll go ahead and set that up the way that panning across would be. We'll just go like this right here. Boom, boom. Now this spans across this particular image and hey, I want this actually over here on this one as well. We'll turn dynamic zoom off. So once again, it's a st steady picture. You can hold alt drag it across, and we have the literal exact same one. You can use repeatedly in the same 
exact video, or you can save these in power bins as well to continue using. So, hey, if you got anything out of this video, if you're going to end up using these dynamic zooms, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear. Hit the like button and subscribe up for future DaVinci Resolve videos and general content creation type videos. Is what I do here on this channel. Peace out and catch you in the next video.